In this video, we will be factoring by grouping. And you know you need to factor by grouping when you see four terms. In this problem here, we have four terms. One, two, three, four. When you have four terms, factoring by grouping will be the appropriate method. So as the name implies, we'll be grouping. So we're going to group these first two together. So we'll underline those together. I'll use different colors. And then we're going to group these two together. So in red, the underlined in red here, we are looking for the greatest common factor of these two. The greatest common factor of those two terms is a b squared. We can't take out a number here because our coefficients are 2 and 1, and 1 is the only common factor, and that does no good. So technically there is a 1 there, but we don't write it. So we would be left with 2b plus 1 here. Why? Because 2b cubed divided by b squared, we're left with 2b. b squared divided by b squared right there leaves us with a plus 1. We must write this plus 1. We need that placeholder because when we distribute it back in, we need to make sure we get this. And b squared times 2b, 2b cubed, check. b squared times 1 plus b squared, check. So we know we did the first part right. Then we look at the part in green here, these last two. Greatest common factor there is just a plus 1. That's the biggest thing that we can divide out is a positive 1 there. So we put our parentheses and we write what is left. 2b divided by 1 is 2b. 1 divided by 1 is plus 1. Now we check it and make sure. So 1 times 2b, 2b. 1 times 1, 1. Check. So everything works. Now here is the pattern. And students often get confused, so pay attention here. We are going to group up in a parentheses the two that are outside. So the b squared and the plus 1 go in parentheses together. So b squared plus 1. And then you need to notice, and it must be this way, your two parentheses here have to match. If they didn't match when you did it, then something's wrong or it won't factor, one of the two. You either made a mistake or it's just not going to factor. So the 2b plus 1, we write it one time, one time only, not twice. A lot of students try to write this part twice. Don't do that. Now, let's talk about why this works. Here's what it means. In our original factoring right here, where we just took the greatest common factor out, this part right here, this part I've circled, gave us b squared times 2b and b squared times 1. Well, that's what we have here, b squared times 2b, b squared times 1, same thing. Over here, this parentheses gave us 1 times 2b and 1 times 1. And if we FOIL out this, we have 1 times 2b, 1 times 1. So we only need to write this part one time, the 2b plus 1. If you had another 2b plus 1 over here, it would be wrong, and you'd be multiplying too many things together. So our factored form is, get rid of these arrows here, factored form is b squared plus 1, 2b plus 1. So this factors to this. All right, second example here, we have n cubed minus 2n squared plus n minus 2. So we want to factor this completely. We always, we didn't do this before because there wasn't one, there's not one here, but we're going to look anyway. We always look for a greatest common factor first in the original problem. There is no greatest common factor, so we move on. Now we see that we have four total terms, so our immediate thought is factor by grouping. When we have four terms, factor by grouping. So we're going to group up these first two and we're going to group up these last two. It doesn't matter what order this was written in. It, even if you grouped those two and these two, it would still work out, but just take the first two, group those, second two, group those. Just follow that process. So in blue, greatest common factor would be an n squared. That's the greatest common factor we can take out of n cubed and negative 2n squared. So once I do that, I'm left with an n and a negative 2. Okay, check that and make sure we did it right. n squared times n, n cubed, check. n squared times negative 2, negative 2 n squared, check. Everything is going well so far. So now this one. We have a greatest common factor of a plus 1 here. That's the greatest thing we can divide out of n and a negative 2. It's a positive 1. So we're left with just the n minus 2. Now we discussed in the first example, it's important that you look at this point and make sure your two parentheses match. If they don't, you've done something wrong. Then what we did is we took the two terms that were outside the parentheses and put those together in 1. So n squared plus 1 goes together. 
and then we wrote the matching parentheses one time, one time only. So we're done. n cubed minus 2 n squared plus n minus 2 factors to n squared plus 1 n minus 2. So let's look at another one. All right, this is our third example here. So we look for a greatest common factor, and there isn't one. So now we look at how do we need to factor? What, what process do we need to use? We have four terms, one, two, three, four. So factor by grouping is the appropriate method. So we'll uh, group those two, and we'll group those two. So in blue there, greatest common factor there would be a 7 for the coefficients and an r squared for the variable part. So 7r squared, 7 comes out of 28 and 49, r squared comes out of r cubed and r squared. So we would be left with 28 divided by 7 is 4, r cubed divided by the r squared there would be an r. Negative 49 divided by 7 is negative 7, and r squared divided by r squared, they just cancel. Now check it before we move on. So that would be 28r cubed, check. That would be negative 49r squared, check. So everything works so far. Now the part in red. Uh, between uh, 32 and 56, the greatest common factor is a, um, let's see, 8. 8 would be the greatest common factor. Now here's an important point. If this number right here is negative, you need to take the negative with it. So we're going to use a negative 8. In the previous problems, we had a positive right there, so we took out a positive number here. So if this is negative, you should take it out. Take out the um, negative with it. So negative 8 will be the greatest common factor here. So negative 32r divided by negative 8 is a positive 4r. Make sure you get your signs right. 56 divided by negative 8 is a negative 7. Make sure that that works, so check it. Negative 8 times 4R, negative 32R, check. Negative 8 times negative 7, positive 56, check. It all works. Now make sure your parentheses match. They do, so we should be in good shape. So take the two that are outside the parentheses, 7R squared and negative 8, put those together, and then write your matching parentheses one time and one time only. And then you can check it in your calculator. So we've discussed this. Let's check it real quick. So we go to y equals, we put the original problem in y1. So we have x only in our calculator, so we're going to use x instead of r. So 28x cubed minus 49x squared minus 32x plus 56. So original problem is there. And in parentheses, 7x squared subtract 8 and 4x subtract 7 in the second. Go in our table. And we want to make sure that the y1 and y2 match, that they do. So that tells us this is equivalent to this. So we know we did it right. So let's look at uh, one more example. All right, last example for this video. So we have 30k cubed plus 42k squared minus 45k minus 63. So we always look for a greatest common factor first. This one actually has a 3. 3 comes out of 30, 42, 45, 63. So we're going to take that out. So take out the 3. We're left with a 10k cubed. Then 42 divided by 3 would be 13. So plus 13, uh, that's not right. That would be um, 14. There we go, 14k squared. Negative 45 divided by 3 would be negative 15 with a K on the back. And then negative 63 divided by 3 would be 21, so negative 21. Okay, so now we've taken the greatest common factor out. We have to take what's left and factor it. What's left is four terms, so we automatically think factor by grouping. So we'll group those two, and we'll group these two. So. Uh, it's important that we write the 3 every time. Don't forget the greatest common factor, so the 3 is in front. Okay, the greatest common factor now for uh, 10k cubed, I'm going to leave this 3 off for now. I'll put it in a second. So 10k cubed and plus 14k squared, that would be a 2k squared. And um, take that out, and you're left with 5k and plus 7. 
Okay, let's check it and make sure that that works. That's 10k cubed, check. That's plus 14k squared, all good. Now, the part in green there. So notice I have a negative here, so I'm going to take it out. So between 15 and negative 15k and negative 21, it would be a negative 3 there. And I would be left with a 5k plus 7. So make sure that works. Negative 3 times 5k, negative 15k, check. Negative 3 times 21, negative 21, check. Now I'll put the two in that are outside the parentheses together and rewrite the matching parentheses once and make sure you put that three in the very front. So here is our final fully factored answer. We fully factored that. We took the greatest common factor out and then factored what was left. So that is it for that one and that is it for this video.